This is an old used iBuyPower gaming PC that I bought off someone for reasons that I can't remember. I've never used it. It's been sitting on my shelf for the last six months. Yeah, should we dust it off and try it out? Oh God. Oh hey, how you doing? I'm TechDweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video. Do you like dusty, old, cheap, pre-built gaming PCs from companies that have a terrible reputation? Well, you're in luck, because this is supposedly an I buy power gaming PC. That's what the ad on Facebook Marketplace said. It just, uh, I buy power gaming computer with an Asus 1 millisecond gaming monitor, gaming keyboard, gaming mouse, and a Log and Logitech speakers. I bought this late last year for 500 bucks. Uh, judging from what I know about this PC, I'm going to guess that this was originally bought for my buy power in like 2017-ish. So like five years ago. As for the specs, well, I didn't really know what I was getting. The guy didn't seem super into computers. I asked him about the specs and he just said, AMD FX processor, 12 gigabytes of RAM with a GTX 1050 GPU. But when I asked him what model of the 1050 it was, he showed me a, po a photo of what was obviously a 1060. I think that's one of the reasons why I got this at a good price. At, at the time, the GPU shortage was in full swig. And I think if he had the GTX 1060 listed properly, it would have sold much sooner at the price that he was asking. The main reason I bought it was for the GPU. That that GTX 1060 at the time was worth more than half the price of the entire PC itself. I wanted to make a few videos on the GTX 1060 because it's still the most popular GPU on Steam. And I did eventually make a, a video about it. And that was a fun video. If you want to see the uh, performance of this GPU alone, then I'll link to that video in the, the, the description below. Dividing the price up amongst the components, I estimate the value of this GPU from this purchase at $200. The, the monitor at $100, the mouse and keyboard and speakers and Wi-Fi at $50, which means that the rest of the PC, you know, the, the motherboard, the RAM, the CPU, the hard drive, the case, that should be worth 150 bucks. A pretty good deal if I do say so myself. <laughs> to be honest, once I got it, I yanked the GPU out to play with, and I also started using the monitor and the mouse. The monitor I didn't know anything about, and it turned out to be a 165 hertz monitor, and it has G-Sync, which is a very nice surprise. Usually when a gaming monitor is included with a Facebook computer, it probably means it's just a regular, normal, non-gaming 1080p monitor. So getting a 165 hertz 1080p monitor with G-Sync in good condition, that, that, that's a great score. The mouse was pretty good too. Uh, this is the Corsair Harpoon RGB mouse. I have another Corsair mouse that I use, but it, it's re it really nice having a decent wireless mouse just, just to use on my test bench when I'm building and testing PCs and stuff. So that's another nice surprise. The rest of this stuff is nothing special. There's a cheap piece of garbage e-waste keyboard, but it has the WASD keys in red. So that's how you know it's for gamers. Some cheap Logitech speakers, a USB Wi-Fi fig. Those uh, light strips you see in the background, those didn't come with the PC. Those are mine. I use those to make the video look more interesting. Is, is it working? Oh, and the monitor didn't have a stand, so I had to MacGyver an old unused monitor stand onto the back. <laughs> Screw it in and duct tape it to hold it down. The PC itself just sat on my shelf. Apart from booting it up once just to make sure it worked, I, I didn't bother using it at all. It was kind of dusty and gross. I didn't feel like tinkering with it and cleaning it up, but I, I, I intended to eventually. And that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna give this thing a full test. We're gonna give it a good thorough cleaning, tidy up the cables a bit, also check out all the components, and then we'll get it booted up, check out the system, get it updated, and then see what kind of experience we get from an old iBuy Power gaming PC. We'll check out the specs as we go. Starting off with the case, this is a Corsair Carbide Series Spec 04 Mid Tower Gaming Case. Opening it up, we could see lots of dust. <laughs> There's no IO shield for the motherboard. Kind of ghetto there. The power supply is something. Some generic 400 watt power supply that looks like it's going to explode even before I turn it on. <laughs> That's always an exciting adventure. 
Here's our GPU, this weird OAM GTX 1060, plugged in with one of those SATA to 6-pin adapter cable things. The motherboard is an ASRock 970M Pro 3, apparently. And the processor is an AMD FX something. I, I, don't, know, I don't know what it is. So this will be a fun surprise for both of us. <laughs> uh, let's pull this cooler off and check out the uh, thermal paste. Uh, oh god, it's stuck. <laughs> the cooler is stuck to the processor. Oh, that's not good. So, uh, we could either leave it alone or yank it off. I I'm not gonna tell you what you should do in this situation, but I'm gonna yank. Oh god. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I really yanked it right out of the socket. <laughs> uh, I hope it's not damaged or anything. That'd make for, for a pretty lame video if I broke the CPU. Uh, it looks alright to me, I guess. So yeah, lots of crusty old thermal paste on there. I, I'm glad I took it off. So we'll clean off that cooler. There we go, nice and fresh. And we'll do the CPU too. Okay, and, and now we can see that this is an FX 8320. Four core, eight threads, 3.5 gigahertz base clock with a boost up to 4.0 gigahertz. How well it'll handle modern games? I, I don't know, but we'll find out in a bit. There's our eight gigabyte stick of RAM and another four gigabyte stick. At least it's running a dual channel. What else do we have here? 120 gigabyte Western Digital Greed SATA SSD. That'll be enough for a system drive. And what's this? A Western Digital Blue one terabyte mechanical hard drive. Cool. Uh, th that's actually pretty good for a PC at this price point. We have two fans, one 120 millimeter intake fan at the front and another 12 millimeter exhaust at the back. Space for more fans, of course. This is a decent case, although, although I really hate red cases. This whole PC has a red vibe though, so I, I guess it's fine. Good for people who like red things. As you can see, the cable management is bad. It's non-existent. And around back, yeah, uh, no cable management to speak of. I don't know if I buy power did this mess of cables, but I, I suspect they did. I doubt the guy who sold this to me knew anything about what plugs plug into which plug holes. The, the dust can't be blamed on I buy power though. Actually, uh, speaking of dust, let's give it a good cleaning, shall we? Using my air duster with the built-in brush attachment, which is essential. <laughs> Seriously, if you clean pre PCs every now and then, just get yourself an air duster and make sure it has the brush attachment. You, you won't regret it. Okay, squeaky clean. Time to put this bad girl back together, starting with the processor and... Uh-oh, uh it, it's not going in smoothly. Uh, what's going on? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys. Bent pins. I didn't notice it before. Oh my gosh, look at all of them. This is a problem. Uh, okay, oh god. Uh, let's see what we could do. I heard you could fix bed pins using a credit card or a driver's license. I, I don't have either of those, so I borrowed my mobs. You just gotta use the card to slowly and carefully bend the pins back into position so that they're all nice and straight. This took a while, not gonna lie, but in the end, I, I did an okay job. It fit back into the socket at least. Will it work? Well, I have no idea. I certainly hope so. Okay, uh, let's put some thermal paste on the CPU and slap the cooler back on. Uh, there we go. Uh, put the RAM back in. Uh, now, before we put our GPU in, we, we gotta cable bandage this thing. I mean, it's a big mess, so pretty much any cable management at all will be an improvement. I didn't want to spend ages on it, so I just did what I could quick and easily do. Still, it uh, turned out okay. It looks way better than it did before, so that's good. And we'll slap in our GPU with that SATA to 6-pin PCIe adapter. And there we go. Eh, not bad. Not bad at all. So, now that we've given it a nice little cleanup and a facelift, we'll put it all back together. So, let's get it all set up and booted up. And... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we booted. I was actually pretty worried that I'd mangle that CPU beyond redemption. I'm glad to see I didn't dweeb it up too bad. Here's our CPU, four cores, eight threads, 3.5 gigahertz, and our RAM running a dual channel at 1600 megahertz, and our GPU, the GTX 1060. And look at this, not only are there red fans, there's also a red light strip. 
I didn't notice that until just now. I'll run a quick Unreal Valley benchmark just to make sure that we're all good. And yeah, yeah, it looks like it's working good. G great, actually. We're good to go. So I'm going to get this thing all updated, install Steam, all that good stuff. And then we're going to try out some games. Should we do that now? Are you ready? All right. And go. Starting off, as always, with Shadow the Tomb Raider. I tested this game in my standalone GTX 1060 video, so I knew it would work okay. I went with 1080p with the medium preset. It got an average of 50 FPS. This game feels really good. It's not 60 FPS, but that G-Sync on this monitor it really feels much smoother than you would expect at this FPS. This is a fine FPS to play this, uh, uh, this game with a controller. I'd play like this, sitting back on my couch with a controller. No problem at all. <laughs> and you really gotta hand it to the GTX 1060. This is the most popular GPU on Steam for a reason. It's re really held up over the years. This isn't an extended gaming test, so I'm just gonna try five or six games. Just, just, a, just a few games to get an idea of how the computer performs. Here's another game I love to test, The Witcher 3, 1080p with a medium preset. This PC was able to get an average of 78 FPS. <laughs> that, that's just awesome. And it looks awesome. Seriously, this game looks good even at low settings. I wasn't expecting it to do this good, to be honest. Almost 80 FPS? That's freaking awesome. There, there were some stutters at the start, but they went away after playing for a while. But that might be because I was running this off an external hard drive, so don't take too much stock in that. This game ran amazing on this PC. And that, that's freaking awesome. Come on, unbind me before the next one's come. When they come, I'll tend to them. Meanwhile, let's you and me chat. Uh, this was a weird one. GTA 5. Uh, this game is so super well optimized. It runs great on almost any hardware. But there was something up here. I'm running at 1080p with the high settings, which is like the medium settings in this game. And uh, considering the performance of The Witcher 3 and Tomb Raider, I was expecting to get at least 100 FPS, maybe up to like 150. But no, not even close. I only got 61 FPS average. I I'm not sure what's going on here. Look at the utilization of both the CPU and the GPU. Neither is being pushed super hard. If any of you guys have an, a an idea why this game wasn't doing better on uh, this setup, I I I'd love to hear it. Please let me know in the comments. My theory is that it just comes down to the, the, the fact that this is an older CPU. Uh, some games will play nice with it, but some won't. Here's another game that didn't run great, but it ran acceptably. This is Elden Ring. It's a brand new game. It came out just a few months ago. So the fact that it's running good enough on this older hardware, that, that's nice to see that you can use this, uh, this computer to play new games. This game has some weird performance. It runs great on some very low end setups, but then there are some higher end hardware that it, it doesn't like and it runs like crap. This game has a 60 FPS cap, so even if we could push crazy frame rates, it, it wouldn't matter. We only got 30 FPS on average, but I played for a while, and it felt fine. This is another game that lends itself to playing with a controller. These third-person action games, and you don't need crazy high FPS to enjoy them. 30 FPS is the minimum. I wouldn't go, go less than this, but at 30, it, it's fine, and, and it looks really good too. Moving along, here's Cyberjong 2077, the beast, the ultimate benchmark. 
This game is the new Cannon Run Crisis. It's very demanding and it's not very well optimized. So it's a good test of hardware. It's also a newish game. If your PC can run this, it can probably run anything. And yeah, yeah, it's it's sort of running. We're at 1080p, but we had to turn down the graphics to low and also the crowd density. And I used some FSR 1.0 to get a bit of a boost. FSR is set to quality and I got an average of 40 FPS. The 1% lows weren't great, but it was playable. Just barely, but, but playable. You, you could play this game and have a good time. And if you used some more aggressive FSR settings, you could probably get that frame rate up even higher. It looks good at these settings. It's not like it's ugly or anything. So I'll still give this game a thumbs up, but, but just barely. Two more games to test here. I really wanted a few games that would let me take advantage of that 165 Hertz G-Sync monitor. The computer came as a bundle, the PC and the monitor. So obviously the guy who had it used this PC to play some high refresh rate games, like uh, eSports style games. So I had to try some CSGO. Running at 1080p with the lowest settings and it ran uh, amazing, as you would expect. I couldn't get the MSI Afterburner FPS counter to work, but you can see the Steam Overlay FPS counter at the top left there. I'm going to estimate that I got an average of around 180 FPS. Sometimes it would drop into the low 100s, but sometimes it would be above 200. It felt amazing on this 165 Hz monitor. With G-Sync, oh man. I'm not a competitive gamer, but I like games and I like tech. And I definitely appreciated how good this game felt. And I could totally see how somebody who's actually good at this game will get a huge competitive advantage running a high refresh rate monitor with G-Sync. But I suck at the game, so I can only dream about what that would be like. This was the game I was most excited about, so I saved it for last. It's Doom. For, for some reason, as soon as I got this computer, I had a feeling that Doom would be the game for me. Like, the PC's all red, so, and so is Doom, so it has that going for it. And with a high refresh rate monitor, uh, Doom is an amazing experience. It's also very well optimized. It runs freaking awesome on a wide variety of hardware. And it feels amazing to play when you can get that FPS really hot. But it also looks great when you can crank up the graphics. I was running at 1080p with the high settings and I got an average of 106 FPS. But with that G-Sync, it felt like freaking 200 FPS. I don't mess around with adaptive sync on my main rig. I only have free sync on my ultra wide monitor and it's not a perfect implementation so I don't bother with it. But this monitor with this PC when the stars aligned and you get a game that runs well and lends itself to high refresh rates, oh man, it is something special. This was very fun. I'm gonna play some more tonight on this PC right after I finish this video. So overall, how did we do? Well, keeping in mind the $500 price tag, considering that price includes a good Asus 165Hz G-Sync gaming monitor, decent wireless mouse, speakers, all the stuff you need to get up a gaming, and considering the performance we got, I, I think this is a great PC. Yeah, it's kind of ugly, especially that power supply. Uh, that's easily replaced. And of, of course, you, you really need to be into red if you're going to buy a PC like this. But you know what? I buy power. I'm not going to say that you impressed me with the build. But, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I have a really good gaming experience on my hands here. And it was a great price. So I find it hard to find fault with the actual build. It has okay decent working components. It's set up correctly. Well, that's what really matters. I don't know what the original price was for this PC, but for the price I paid, I feel like this was a bargain. I use PCs in general. It, it can be really hit or miss. I know what I'm doing. I know what to look for. So I'm not likely to buy a lemon. And there, there's lots of luck involved. I got lucky that this PC had no problems, that it had a GTX 1060 instead of the 1050 that the guy thought it had, that the gaming monitor was actually a gaming monitor, 
I don't know what the final fate of this PC will be. I'll probably sell it cheap to a family member or just resell it on Facebook or something. But I'm definitely not going to get rid of it until I give the, this CPU and motherboard a proper test. And this experience shows that an FX 8320 is still a fine gaming CPU in most situations. But I think a full benchmark test with a ton of games, that would be a fun video to settle it once and for all. So get subscribed so you don't miss that. So how did I do here, in your opinion? Good deal, or did I pay too much? And oh, I I'd love to hear about what the sorts of used PC deals that you find in your local area. Let me know what sort of used PC experiences you've had in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.